Today, we will rank Reds closer slash bullpen ace candidates by tiers, including a few who the Reds could sign. Those are some guys that will help this Reds bullpen in 2022, including some guys who are already here. That's coming up on today's Locked On Reds podcast. Let's get started. You are Locked On Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Reds your hashtag first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. I'm your host, Jeff Carr, the addict and super fan of all things Cincinnati Reds. And I've turned that addiction into information for you when it comes to the Cincinnati Reds that's been an up and down sort of feeling ever since the end of the season we've been talking about how they have just decided to be cheap and how they've decided to take a step back but we can still see hope on the horizon and there are some guys on this team when it comes to the bullpen that was on uh, you know obviously very honestly shaky at best and terrible on most most days this past year that there are some guys that they can rely on in that bullpen ace spot of course they will be without tj antone this coming season because he had to have tommy john surgery toward the end of 2021 the reds will not see him until 2023 so he is not available this year. So you're looking at a group of guys who for the most part were pretty unproven. There were some good stretches for a lot of these guys when it comes to the possible bullpen ace, the closer, I got three tiers and we're going to start with the most likely tier. There's three guys that I'm including in this group. These are three guys who have the combo of opportunity and ability that could ultimately lead to them being the top cat in the Reds bullpen. Now, opportunity being they're not going to go out and sign Kenley Jansen. I would love that. That would be amazing, but we're being realistic a little bit here. And this is for 2022. I'm not talking about guys who probably are labeled future closer, i.e. Dari Moretta, although we will talk about him later on in this episode, but these are guys who can help the Reds this season. So with that in mind, there are three guys, two of them are currently on the roster. One of them is a free agent, but I believe the reds could actually go after him. Number one is Lucas Sims. Now this is in no particular order though. If you had put a gun to my head and said, pick an order, I'd say Lucas Sims has the best chance of being the reds closer in 2022. Now hear me out. One of the biggest reasons for this is after he came back from his injury, he was absolutely lights out, fantastic. People couldn't touch him. Hitters couldn't touch him from opposing teams because after that injury, which was about August 9th till the end of the season, he made 19 appearances. Now, of course, a bit of a small sample size, but in those 19 appearances, he had a 46.4% strikeout rate, 46%. And he only had a walk rate of 4.3%. That is insane. There, there, there are a lot of people that when they talk about baseball statistics and they talk about pitching statistics, one of the key things that they mention is the difference in strikeout and walk rates. That is insane. That is a level that were he to keep that up for an entire season, you're talking about some really just eye popping numbers that Lucas Sims would be able to compile. Now, obviously that's again, 19 appearances, tiny sample size. He would have a lot more throughout a full season, but if you can, you know, you, you put that together with the fact that during that period of time, he allowed a 167 batting average against him. He was only giving up three quarters of a base runner in any, his whip, his walks plus hits per innings pitch was 0.76. So, you know, just a shade over three quarters, but still phenomenal numbers. He was absolutely reliable there. And, and part of that was he was dealing with, I believe it was a, uh, a, thumb injury, I think, um, crap. Uh, but he, he had a injury there that would really messed him up in June. He missed some time for that. He came back. And after he came back, he was absolutely phenomenal. This next guy, 
you're going to maybe cringe a little bit because I included him on this list, but hear me out. Amir Garrett. You're going to say, Jeff, he had an awful year. Why is he even on this list? Let alone in the most likely tier. Amir Garrett is super talented. He had a terrible 2021 and he'd be the first to admit that, but consider for a moment, the two years combined before this past year. Now, obviously we're not going to just look at 2020 by itself. I wanted to combine it with 2019, but when you do that, when you compare or when you combine 2019 and 2024, Amir Garrett, he had 74 appearances with a 3.04 ERA and he wasn't getting that lucky. His X FIP, which is a statistic that it's, it's formulated like an ERA, but it's trying to get rid of things that he can't control. Basically an ERA predictor was 3.57. So he was still a very good pitcher when you look at those numbers and a 32.8% strikeout rate for 74 appearances for two years. That's not a tiny sample size. That's a pretty nice sample size, something that you can hang your hat on. Now, the one thing that remains concerning, even throughout those two years was his walk rate. And that was something he had a lot of problems with in 2021, but he's always been a high walk rate pitcher. His walk rate was 13%. If he can somehow tap back into what he was doing in the two years leading up to 2021, he will round back into the form that will put him as the bullpen ace for the 2022 Reds. And look, I've said this before, and it goes uh, without saying that you know it, it can work in a positive manner or it can work in a negative manner, and that is relief pitching is a fickle thing, man. You can be really good one year really bad the next. And I always use the same example, Eric Gagne. Eric Gagne set the record for most consecutive saves converted. And then after that, he disappeared because he just couldn't convert another. I mean, he converted some, but it was not with regularity and he wasn't a great pitcher after that streak was over, but relief pitching is just a fickle thing, man. And I think that Amir Garrett could use that to his advantage and bounce back in 2022. The Reds at least are going to gamble that he does. And the third guy who I think is, he combines opportunity. It's interesting because he's a free agent. So you'd think that the opportunity isn't there, but I believe the Reds could bring this dude back. Of course, I'm talking about Michael Givens. He's gotten some interest by the Phillies as well as other teams, but I believe that the Reds could possibly get him for around four, maybe 5 million a year, at least for a couple of years, maybe two years, something like that. I don't know. I, Look, that's a little bit of just me ballparking free agent stuff. I'm not an expert when it comes to that, but th they wouldn't have to pay him the amount of money that you'll probably have to pay a Brad hand or obviously a Kenley Jansen or something like that. They could get him kind of on the second or third tier of free agent relief pitcher contracts. And that is something that the Reds are going to be looking at whether they can do. Michael Givens could be in that group. Should he resign, he would be a very uh, highly favored candidate to win the Reds closer slash bullpen ace, because I don't want them to be relegated to just the ninth inning. He could win that job. Coming up, the ones who have an argument to make that bullpen ace, but they probably won't be there on opening day. Before we talk about that, though, I want to tell you about some Built Bar. You need to add Built Bar into your snack game right now because it's the protein bar that tastes exactly like a candy bar. You're going to be eating something that is amazingly healthy for you, but you're also going to be filling that craving for something sweet. It's made with 100% real chocolate, and it's got the best mouthfeel of any protein bar on the market bar none. Plus you've got amazing flavors like cherry bar. See ya. You've got the built bar puffs of which I absolutely love. They are a bar that is a marshmallow covered in chocolate. That just sounds amazing in and of itself. But then you add in the fact that it's 180 calories and up to 18 grams of protein. What? Yes. A marshmallow has protein and it's a built bar. Check it out today at built.com. Use the promo code locked 15 to get 15% off your next order. I love built bar, man. I, you can replace a meal with it. If you really want to, I'm not the kind of person that replaces meals with protein bars, but I've heard that it works. 
but it's an amazing snack to hold you over. If you're looking at a long wait, uh, maybe you're going out to eat or something right now and just everybody is out. Get yourself a Built Bar. It'll hold you over and it's going to taste amazing too. Go to Built.com and use the promo code LOCK15 to save 15% off your next order. Thanks again for making Locked On Reds your hashtag first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. Tomorrow, huge announcement on the next Locked On Reds. Huge announcement for the future of the show. You're not going to want to miss it. All right, we talked about the top tier, the most likely tier, the three guys in Lucas Sims and Amir Garrett and Michael Gibbons, who, if Michael Gibbons were signed as a red whenever the lockout ends, then he would be a very uh, lucrative closer candidate for the Reds. I got two guys that are in the close call tier. These guys have a shot, but probably not on opening day. There's two guys that I'm looking at, Luis Sessa and Tony Santion. Luis Sessa came over from the Yankees in a deal that when you say it out loud, it sounds ridiculous, but the Yankees were trying to clear some roster space and clear a little bit of payroll as well, which that in and of itself sounds weird. The Yankees clearing payroll. I didn't think they had to do that, but they sent him and Justin Wilson to the Reds for one player to be named later. The Reds didn't even name a guy and they got two back who'd had names. Go figure. But Luis Sessa was amazing for the Reds in his short time here. Again, small sample size, but he had a 23% strikeout rate and only a 2% walk rate and allowed just three of 13 inherited runners to score in the time that he pitched for the Reds. It was phenomenal to see when you're talking about a guy that, to be honest with you, you really had, even I, I, I had to look him up. I'm like, who is Luis Sessa? I mean, that, that, that sounds a little bit familiar, but not really. And when he came into games, the eye test, he really works the eye test as well. It's not just something that you're talking about numbers with Luis Sessa because he's very good at keeping the ball low in the zone. He's not going to get beat very often with the home run ball. His thing is he's got to have a pretty decent defense behind him because he's going to induce a lot of ground balls with his sinker slider combo. But that slider's nasty, man. That's that weird slider that doesn't break horizontally. It breaks vertically. And it just dives under bats. It's so fun. Luis Sessa is one dude in the Reds bullpen that when he is called upon, I'm actually excited to watch him pitch. It's not like a, Ooh, oh boy, I don't know if this guy's going to get an out. And, uh, Luis Sessa coming in, I feel a little bit confident in. And I think that's why he's in this close call tier. I don't think that he's really in that top tier of consideration for the Reds, but maybe through the first couple of months in the season, maybe something happens with some other guys. And David Bell looks at Luis Sessa and says, hey, maybe he could be the bullpen ace. Who knows? Another guy that I'm looking at, and this guy's got a wide range of outcomes. He's going to be a fun player to talk about for 2022, and that is Tony Santion. Tony Santion could be in the rotation. Tony Santion could also be the closer. He is a phenomenal pitcher, and when he was put into the bullpen last year, he thrived. He made a couple of starts, and then he had a lot of relief appearances, 22 relief appearances. Now, by saying a lot, that's not like saying, like, wow, that's a ton. It's still a small sample size when you're talking about a dude's career, but when you look at Tony Santion in those 22 appearances, he had that wipeout slider, his slider. Now again, you know, Luis Cessas was a vertical. His uh, Tony Santion's is a horizontal slider. That's going to start right where you think it's going and then break about a foot to the left. Just an absolutely phenomenal pitch that he has. And he has the ability to locate his fastball, which made him dangerous out of the bullpen, a 33.3% strikeout rate. I'm no mathematician, but I think that's one out of every three batters he struck out. Not bad. And you've got a 2.36 ERA to boot. Now his ex-fip says he was getting a little bit lucky there. It was in the fours. Again, ERA, a little bit unreliable when you're talking about relief pitchers, but it's a nice number, so I wanted to include it because it looked pretty good in those 22 appearances. That's something that I'm looking forward to seeing from Tony Santion in the spring. I'm guessing he's going to get some run as a starter, at least in spring training, and they'll see where they go from there. That's why I say it's interesting to watch him because he could be in the rotation but it could also be a very viable bullpen option for this team. I'd be interested. I don't know. I, I got to ask some folks about this, but I, 
I don't know as of right now where I think he is most valuable to the Reds. That would be something that I would find interesting as to how people would think it through is, I mean, obviously if you are a good starting pitcher, you're much more valuable than a good relief pitcher, but is he more likely to be a good starting pitcher than a relief pitcher? And ergo, that's where the question comes from, because I think that he's got the stuff to be a much better reliever than a starter. I don't think that's an insult. I don't mean to insult if that is. But I think Tony Santion is going to be a lot of fun to watch here in 2022. Um, yeah, that's only two guys. Um, we, we've said three with the most likely. Two in this second tier. Is there anybody else? Jeff Huff? No. Brad Brack? Hmm. No. Cino Perez. No, no, no. He's on Baltimore. Baltimore got him. Yeah. Um, the next tier of this is crowded. We're going to talk about that here in just a minute. Before we talk about that, though, I got to tell you about betonline.ag. Go there today and set up your profile with a promo code locked on to get a 50% welcome bonus. You can turn your sports knowledge into cash with all the amazing lines and odds and over-unders and things like that that they have at betonline.ag. Head there today and check out the lines that they've got for the NFL, NCAA football, as we're rolling through whatever bowl season currently looks like in the playoffs coming up this weekend. And you're talking about the NBA, NHL, UFC, boxing. You can check it all out at betonline.ag. Set up your profile again with the promo code locked on to get a 50% welcome bonus. Start making some cash off your sports knowledge at betonline.ag, where the game starts. You can connect with the show on Twitter at Locked On Reds, and you can find me as well at Jeff Carr with three F's and hit up the Locked On Reds line at 513-549-0159. All right, we've talked about the most likely guys who could be the Reds' closer this coming season, talked about two guys who have a shot but probably not on opening day. Now we're into the category that the Reds have seen to try to build their entire bullpen around, and that is dart throws. But I'm going to add a caveat to this. These guys aren't just dart throws. They're not just randos. They're dart throws with upside. Got three guys that follow that category. Now, don't get me wrong. There's going to be plenty of dart throws in this bullpen when it comes to just uh, getting outs. These are guys who I have some confidence in their ability to get outs. I think that they're a dart throw with upside when it comes to the ability to be the ace of this Reds bullpen. Now, a couple of them for differing reasons. Number one is Justin Wilson. You're going to say, yeah, he didn't really pass the eye test for me last year, Jeff, and I don't think I'd argue too much with you. I think that he was okay. He seems like a reliable middle innings guy. Maybe he can eat up one or two innings for you. Maybe he can pitch in a blowout, something like that. But he at least has the ability to get ground balls, and that's something that's important for any pitcher, whether you're a starter or a reliever a great American ballpark. Plus he has experience. That's something that's important. Another guy that is on this list, the dart throws with upside art Warren, art Warren didn't get a ton of run last year. He had problems with injuries and he couldn't stay healthy, but in 21 appearances, he looked phenomenal. He had an ERA just above one. Now the caveat with that is as with any relief pitcher, ERA is not that reliable. Plus you also factor in the, uh, the, uh, leverage the games that he was being brought into. Sometimes they were a little bit lower than normal, not necessarily the tight ball games and, and the times where you're really wanting a guy to come through and get a couple of outs for you. That's not necessarily the situation he was always brought into, but in every situation he was brought into, he pitched well. He's a guy that with a little bit more run and maybe some more tests could prove himself worthy of being a bullpen ace. And one other guy, when I look at this group, these dart throws with upside, I'm looking at Dowry Moretta. I just, there is something about this dude. He only made a handful of appearances this last year and he wasn't perfect. He wasn't completely polished, but he is a prospect. He is a dude who probably could run this bullpen one day, maybe not in 2022, but maybe 2023, maybe 2024. I think 
if I'm expecting him to be the bullpen ace, I think I'm starting those expectations in 2024. But this year, I'm really excited to see some more run out of Dowry Moretta. I really hope that he begins the season out of spring training. It depends on what kind of moves the Reds make for the bullpen, but I feel like he's a lot more talented than insert name of waiver claim guy here. I don't think that that's something that I'm going to say, oh boy, I think uh, Kyle Dowdy looks a lot better than Dowry Moretta. I don't think so. The eye test in the handful of appearances that I saw with Dowry Moretta, he's got nice mechanics and a very fun fastball to watch. Very high velocity. I, I think he's got a lot of upside here. I just think that when it comes to 2022, we're probably talking about a dude who pitches in the seventh inning thereabouts. Plus, I think that he's got a nice career ahead of him. What that might look like, hard to tell. Crystal ball is, uh, I don't know where it went. Think of the Boba Fett helmet, though. Love that. All right. Thanks again for watching and for listening here to the Locked on Reds podcast and making me your hashtag first listen of the day. Now go make your second listen, Locked on Bets. Your boy Q and Lee Sterling have all the information you need to make some money at betonline.ag. And that's Locked on Bets, just like Locked on Reds, free and available wherever you get your podcast tomorrow huge announcement or you know next podcast huge announcement here on the locked on reds podcast you're not going to want to miss it it might be the off season it might be locked out but we're locked on reds every single day